Right, today we're going to be talking about something, something that you put in your car that saves you money, effectively, apparently, kinda. Also, Lauren bought me this really cool mug for Christmas, which I'm really satisfying, but uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go on with the video. Yeah. Okay, so I bought my first car a couple years ago now. Uh, in fact, I think it was two, two and a bit years ago. Uh, in fact, it was exactly two years ago in September last year. So two and a half years, pretty much. And in that time, I have covered just under 50,000 miles and I've seen a lot of cities. I've done a lot of driving. I've learned a lot of things and pretty much the entire time. In fact, no, yeah, the entire time I've had my car, by the first week of having it, it's had a little thing in it called a black box. And I kind of just, I'm intrigued about it more than anything. Okay, so when you get your first car, depending on your age and a lot of other things and a few other factors, your insurance is probably gonna be pretty damn high. Mine was sort of, I think just over or just under 2,000 pounds. It was something ridiculous. It was like 1,900 maybe. And bear in mind, I drive a little 1.2 litre Skoda Fabia that I bought for 500 pounds in cash. It's not exactly the most luxurious, expensive vist of whips. That's definitely a word. It's not exactly the most luxurious, expensive whip, but it does the job for me either way. The insurance is nearly, in fact, is more than triple the worth of the car. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but hear me out. Now the insurance for the first year is actually meant to be a little bit more expensive than I got it for, but I vouched for the option of the black box with my insurance. So here's how it works. So you have this little one week period from when you buy your car and insure it to when you get the black box fitted. And that week is sort of like your week to drive like a lunatic and um, have some fun or whatever that might be, um, that's entirely up to you. I don't condone reckless driving, but some people do. So that's that's for you to decide really, but hear me out. After that one week period is over, a mechanic will then come to your house or you'll have to take it to a garage. I don't know how it works with other insurers, but with my insurer that I went with, a mechanic came to my house and he, uh, he basically came and installed the black box for me, but he actually told me to not look because he doesn't want me to know where it is so I couldn't tamper with it, um, but you know, doing enough looking around in your car, you're gonna find out where it is, aren't you? So immediately, as soon as he left, I was looking around trying to figure out where it was, and lo and behold, it's right on the right of my dashboard next to my fuse box. So not exactly the most hidden device ever, but uh, yeah, that's what happens. And then from there on in, you're locked into the contract of doom with a black box, and it's uh, it's not a pleasant one, I've got to admit. Now with my insurance company that I went with, I actually got an application that I could log on to and check my statistics and how good or bad my driving was. And I could also go on the website and access my dashboard from there as well. So this is pretty much exactly how it works. What will happen is the insurance that you pay, the premium you pay will come down when you get a black box. But if you drive outside of their guidelines, whether that be a little bit recklessly or take a corner too harsh or accelerate too quickly, brake too quickly, go over the speed limit, whatever that may be, then your insurance will skyrocket. And I mean skyrocket. I ended up paying an extra 30, maybe 40 pounds over the amount that I actually paid a month. So I paid like 150 pound a month, 165 pound a month, I think, if I can remember correctly, for a car that was worth three, maybe four times that. My math isn't very good, let me think. About three times that. And let me just tell you now, I'm not driving recklessly. I'm not talking like I'm going like 60 miles an hour and a 30. I'm not like slamming on my brakes to stop myself from crashing into the back of someone's car. I'm not wheel spinning off the... Uh... I literally was just driving with a bit of oomph, not even anything illegal. Like a policeman would look at it and think it's perfectly normal. It's weird. It's really, really weird. It's very finicky. So basically, if you own a black box or you're thinking about getting insurance with a black box, I'd very much think about the fact that you might, you might not wanna, basically. So the speed limit on motorways in the UK is normally 70 miles an hour. That's like the national speed limit for motorways in the UK. Now bear in mind, my car is a very small powered, low powered car, and it can't really get anything above 70. 
So I wasn't going anywhere above 70. In fact, I wasn't barely even touching 70. Yeah, the dashboard for my insurance was saying I was doing more than that. So to me, that just automatically says that the dashboard isn't very accurate. And last but not least, when it came to renewing my insurance the following year, they said my insurance was going to be somewhere along the lines of £2,560. What? That's five times the price of my... Five times the price of my car. Huh? What? That's crazy. That's ridiculous. So I then vouched to go with someone else for my insurance that year and I got it without a black box. I actually ended up going with MS Bank and I've got to admit they have actually been fantastic. So good, in fact, that I've stayed with them again for another year. So that's who I'm with now and I'm not paying for a black box anymore. But when I left my old insurance company and went with a new one, my old insurance company actually said, oh, well, we can come and remove your black box for you if you want, but it will cost you around £70. And I was thinking, what? I was on the phone to them and I said, really, £70 to unscrew a little box that you've screwed into the side of my car and take it away? Like, I'd rather just do it myself and post it to you if you want my black box. What? So I ended up saying, no, I'll leave that, thank you. I'll just keep the black box in my car, which actually has worked in my favour because that is the basis of today's video. The black box is still in my car to this day and has been for the past two and a half years since I owned the car. So, yeah. What I thought we'd do for today's video is see what's inside a black box. This little magical black box that stops you from spending so much on your insurance initially and then starts charging you a ridiculous amount. <laughs> it's crazy. Right, let's see what's inside it. <coughs> oh, I was like belly, <coughs> barely even warm anymore. <sighs> right, it gets super warm in here by the way. I've got two big soft boxes here and it actually gets ridiculously hot. Oh, it's gonna be nice to get some fresh air. Okay, so the black box, let me just shut the door because it's actually quite chilly. Okay, so in my car you've got a steering wheel here, the dashboard here, and then just down the side you have this little gap here which when you open the door, reveals like a plate thing there. Right, okay, so if you kind of pop this off, I wouldn't recommend using your key because you can snap it and it is a bit of a nightmare if you do snap it. But under here what you'll see is my fuse box and you supply the car with all sorts of whatever the health uses do and then up here to the right you'll see the black box i need a screwdriver that i didn't think of right okay so i'm just gonna undo this i don't even know what i'm expecting here if i'm honest but i'm gonna undo this either way what can go wrong eh so I can just bolted this into my car, it's absolutely mental. Fix the device on the vehicle body by screws and align the arrow with the front of the device. The question is, however, how the frick is he, is that it there? How has he got this in there and where does that go? Is the question. So underneath that there's a little clip like this and then that just goes into the, into the device and I presume is what supplies power. Right, and then I'm just gonna place this back on there, like that, that looks fine, pick up this little crazy looking screw thing, and that's it, done. Okay, so here is the black box, and here's some tools. I guess we're gonna have to try and figure out how the hell we're gonna get in this thing. Right, okay, it seems I don't have a screwdriver small enough after looking for about an hour, so I think I'm just gonna have to destroy the entire thing. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so I've kind of managed to sort of bend the back end of it up a little bit. And when you kind of prise it open, you can just see it's like a little, a little thing in there. There we go, I finally got the entire thing open. The only problem is I don't really understand any of this so if you guys want to head in the comments and say oh well Jed this bit is this this bit is this etc etc please tell me because this is genuinely fascinating I'll let you guys get a better look at that there and uh, you can tell me what's going on so it's gonna very carefully prise that up I presume this is the battery 
So I've completely removed the exterior now, and this is basically the skeleton of whatever's inside a black box. I presume this supplies the power to it right here, and then this comes down to the motherboard and into here. And then here is a little battery in case the car cannot provide power. I presume, I could be wrong, it says on here though that it's 110 mAh, so that definitely is some sort of battery. Here, honestly not a clue what this is, I'm perfectly honest, can't really... Uh, can't really be the best judge on that one. Although me being super stupid, I've only just realized that this is in fact the SIM card in here. If you can see here, it says ZTE, which I presume is some sort of service provider. It also has an IMEI number there, uh, so yeah. What I don't understand though is why you can't actually access the SIM card. But yeah, that is what's inside a uh, black box, I guess. A battery, a SIM card, some other components, and a motherboard that connects to power. That's pretty much it. So I guess the question and conclusion to this weird video is this. Is it worth getting one? Or using one? No, I don't think so. But the thing is with black boxes, it kind of just, it depends what kind of person you are. It depends who you are, how you drive, it depends what kind of car you have, what you can afford, loads of factors kind of come into play when it comes to insurance and I think black box insurance is a bit weird, it's a bit of a grey area for me at least. It's just the guidelines are quite tight and I feel like the accuracy of a device this big just plugged into your car probably isn't, you know, that accurate really. So is it worth it? In some ways, yes, but in most ways, no, because in the end, you actually, if you drive like I did, you actually end up paying more than you would have done if you hadn't got a black box anyway. So yeah, this has been an interesting video, definitely to say the least. Um, but yeah, that's what's inside a black box that goes in your car. Uh, if you want me to do any more of these videos, taking things apart, uh, I guess I can do them, but if you want to see more videos like this, I'd probably go and watch something like What's Inside or whatever. But uh, yeah, that was my really destructive way of opening up whatever the hell was inside that black box and uh, my sort of two pence worth on what's going on with black box insurance. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to smash that sub button, smash that like button and I'll catch you uh, I'll catch you in the next video. We're doing weekly uploads now, so it's gonna get a little bit crazy. I'm looking forward to the next one. Peace.